This is the second poem in a series of five that make up T.S. Eliot's Wasteland. In a game of chess, the central theme is that of sex and seduction, and also of panic and struggle. This is not the loving sex of a good relationship, but rather exploitative, violent and deceptive sexual exchanges. The title refers to the 1657 play by Thomas Middleton, Women Beware Women, in which a young married woman, Bianca, is raped by an aristocratic duke, while her mother-in-law, who is supposed to be looking after her, is diverted by a game of chess. It is other women who are arranging this rape. This poem in the series centres on the theme of human beings as pawns in a game of chess. Fear of decay and death, along with the wind under the door, provide an overall atmosphere for this rather grim look at a rather less savoury aspect of human life. The poem opens with a scene of richness and luxury. Enobarbus in Shakespeare's 1623 play, Antony and Cleopatra, describes Cleopatra's barge as a burnished throne burning on the water. This section of the poem might be a description of the decadent and dissipated setting for the drugging and sexual seduction of the victim. The Cupidon, or Cupid, is the Latin god of desire, erotic love, attraction and affection. From this we get the word cupidity, which means a strong desire or greed for power, wealth and lust. The images of these carved figures of Cupid is reflected in the flames. The strange synthetic perfumes suggest an opiate-induced hypnotic atmosphere of semi-consciousness. The lacaria describes the shiny, polished, panelled ceiling in Virgil's poem The Aeneid. Queen Dido of Carthage prepares a banquet for the Trojan hero Aeneas, who she is hoping to seduce. Flaming torches hang from the gold-panelled ceiling, conquering the night with flames. The seduction is not, su not a success, since Aeneas later deserts Dido and she throws herself on a flaming pyre. Aeneas goes on to found the city of Rome. To add to the brightness of colour in the apartment, sea or driftwood that contains salt and copper burns with orange and green flames. The dolphin is a medieval symbol of love. There follows a terrible story from Ovid's Metamorphosis of King Tereus, who raped Philomena and then cut out her tongue to keep her quiet. The gods could only compensate her by turning her into a nightingale, and the nightingale's song is understood as a sorrowful lament of violated young women. The words jug jug are a crude reference to the rhythm of the sexual, physical se act of sex. The withered stumps of time may refer to the old legends or to Philomena's mutilated tongue. The staring out, leaning forms of a threatening portress, no doubt of the wealthy and powerful men who were used to getting their own way. The voice of the poet then changes, becoming perhaps that of a woman who is anxious and confused. The person responding to her confusion uses the term Rapsali, which among others was one of the names British soldiers in World War I gave to the muddy trenches in which they sheltered and died. The expression, we're all up rat's alley, means that we are lost in a hopeless situation. The wind under the door may be the creeping presence of death. We seem to enter a limbo of nothingness until the poet remembers the pearls that were in the eyes of the drowned man, referred to in the previously in the burial of the dead. The Shakespearean Rag was a music hall song published ten years previously in 1912, but Eliot's reference to its elegance and intelligence is ironic. Rather than for literary edification, it is a vulgar song written for popular amusement. 
The following lines give a sense of the restlessness in a persisting meaninglessness. But what shall we do? We have nothing to do. The routine of the day, hot water at ten, closed car at four, and chess game, cannot really soothe the panicky fear of death that seems to creep into this section. The game of chess takes us back to Middleton's play mentioned earlier in this part of the wasteland. The poem then changes voice again. The poet is now describing a conversation in a British public house. It's closing time and the barman is trying to get his customers to drink up and to go home. The dialogue needs to be heard in a Cockney accent. Albert's wife is complaining about looking old for her years and blames it on a medication that she took in order to bring on an abortion. The closing line is from Hamlet, the words from Ophelia following the death of her father and presaging her mental breakdown. It might be interesting to pause and ask what is the tone of these final lines in the game of chess. Are we to be amused by this raw conversation or are we to shudder at the culturally impoverished lives of the speakers? After the crude exchanges about teeth and sex, the closing line from Ophelia following, her, following the death of her father Polonius is a kind of shock, a voice of gentility and sadness. Is Eliot seeking to amuse us with this dialogue? Is this an illustration of the class prejudice on the part of Eliot? Do we get the impression that the poet is sympathetic with the plight of these people? It may be important to note that attitudes and values change over time, and in making judgments about a work of art, we may have to suspend our own particular prejudices and see the work for its own merits. We may not always feel that we like the artist, but we must respect the art. Outside the question of interpretation and attitudes, the section of the poem sounds plausible and is well observed. <laughs> 